during the week, I am a, a television news reporter. I've been doing that uh, for 10 years now. Uh, I'm an Emmy Award winning reporter. During the weekend, I am a uh, wedding photographer. And I have been for about six years now. Wedding photography allows me to express myself in a way that I can't during the week. It is an uh, incredibly joyous time to be in someone's life. Logistical planning, uh, people skills, stress management, uh, working under pressure, um, and all, all those translate very well into wedding photojournalistic style. A lot of photographers now are shooting um, with their flash uh, in, in what's called off-axis, away from the camera. Uh, to me, photojournalistic style is where the photographer sort of is a fly in the wall and observes a lot of the action, doesn't do a lot of directing, and lets the day kind of unfold and happen naturally. I think those pictures are timeless. Is it a trend or a fad? Uh, I'd like to think uh, not really. A wedding planner can make a wedding photographer's life easier, really, and I hate to say this, but just kind of stay out of the way. A shot list, I think, would be my biggest pet peeve. I think that hampers a creative process tremendously. I don't know if it's the wedding planner that's, uh, that's goading them on to have a list or they're getting this idea of a list from a magazine or from a friend. I think I need a block of time right about here. Give me 30 to 45 minutes of your undivided attention and you'll get some amazing pictures. Hiring a wedding photographer is a huge, huge leap of faith. It's crazy. To, to, to think that, that anyone would do this, but that's what brides and grooms do on a regular basis. And then beyond, above all that, then you have to see, do you get along uh, in terms of your, of your personality? When they're uncomfortable, uh, it definitely shows in the photos when you don't have that relationship with the bride and the groom. They're typically more casual. They, they look more like what they would on an everyday basis. For an engagement shoot, uh, let's make the pictures look about as different as possible from the actual wedding day. If the bride and groom are getting married in a church or a synagogue or a temple or a cathedral, I always, always, always go to the rehearsal. Can you live with, with what the photographer had to do to get those pictures? Obviously the recession has changed things and uh, what I am seeing now is that brides and grooms are um, being very careful with their money. As you know, and as any small business owners know, uh, everything is negotiable. I think at the end of the day, everybody wants a book. How can you embrace a digital file? And so I think everyone wants a book, but not everyone can afford a book. Can one photographer handle this event all on their own? You, again, work with the wedding planner and work with the bride and groom in terms of coming up with a schedule so that a lot of uh, events aren't happening simultaneously. Getting to the salon early, and then while I'm there, I'm planning my next move. Where is he going to be? And then, hopefully, you've, you've spoken with your wedding planner, get ready for their entrance. It's too unpredictable to shoot outside. When it does get rainy or the weather doesn't cooperate, a lot of brides and grooms, they just kind of shrug their shoulders. The, the ones that will mean the most to you probably won't have a lot of the, the background in there because where are the moments? Makeup is very important because it reduces the turnaround time and the workload for the photographer, but not too much makeup. You want the pictures to be timeless. How do you determine if someone is trustworthy as a wedding photographer? The photographer must, must, must have a website. Is there a blog that they're contributing to every single day? So again, with a grain of salt, um, use a lot of uh, use a lot of these uh, peer review sites uh, to scope out your photographer. If you are a an independent wedding planner, the best way to spend your blood, sweat, and tears is with a blog. That uh, that blog gets you you seen. It, it lets people know that you're uh, a, a real human being behind uh, behind all this HTML code. How do we get our message in front of all these young millennials who are have their thumbs and their eyeballs glued? to their iPhones and their Blackberries, and they're less and less in front of a computer. That is the next frontier, is that if you can reach them somehow on their handheld device. As a wedding planner, I think it's completely acceptable to uh, portion off a, uh, a small space in your home for a home office, because so many of us work from home these days. And so you can use this to your advantage in that when your client or a prospective client comes to your home, they can see how stylish you are, they can see how neat you are, they can see how you live, and that is all a reflection of how you work and 
how you would plan a wedding. So start thinking out of the box. Uh, use this economy uh, to your advantage and say to yourself, how can, I, how can I deliver a very unique experience to the bride and groom? Wineries are very popular. Historic uh, mansions. As a photographer, I always encourage them to embrace sort of their, uh, their culture and their background. For wedding planners, I think um, a big part of their job is uh, stress management. Let me do all the worrying. Let the wedding planner do all the worrying. And that's where, that's where um, I can collaborate with a wedding planner. We're all there to do a job, and that's to pull off fantastic, memorable wedding.